so happy because we are literally kicking off the queen edition with one of my favorite queens, Maria Lloyd. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you do not know, I let me do you justice, queen. Let me do you justice. I did my homework. I did my homework. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. Who you talk to? Who you talk to? Hey, social media. I talked to Instagram and then Facebook was sending me some messages. So I, I talked to those two guys. They knew a lot oh about God. you. You'd be surprised. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Let me let me see what you got. I might need to scale back now. Okay, let me see. okay. So I want she is an author of Words Are Wealth. I because I know that was a, a, a body of love. Like you put a lot of work into that. You've been wanting to release that book for a minute. Yes. So that book is out. Ladies and gentlemen, you gotta grab that. She loves Outcast. I think that's her favorite group of all yes. time. I love them. Certified entreport expert. She could help you with the entreport. That, like, we'll talk a little bit about that. Okay. Um, now, this is one of my, my favorites. You are a domain name flipper. Yes. Ugh. Yes. You yeah. flip domain names. Yes, sir. She she is gonna bring some heat. Yo, listen. Email marketing expert, sales copy wizard. She's like she's like the and and, and by the way. Correct me if I'm wrong. They caught you. They call you Miss Diddy. Yeah, in college they did. They used to call me the female Diddy because I was going to school full time. I had two and three internships, and I was working a part time job. Mm. So um, people used to. I mean, I was always in the streets. I was never kicking it. I didn't really have that traditional uh, black college experience where I was kicking it and partying all the time. I was on the hustle. And yeah. so people in college at Clark Atlanta, shout out to my alma mater. They used to call me the female Diddy. Wow. Yep. I love it. I love it. So that book right there, which I wish my book came in time so I can hold my own and I all know. that. It's Look, coming. I'll it's it coming. For you. I'll do it for you. Please talk about that book. That book was a labor of love. Yes. Well, tell me about that book because I, I know how important it is to get your your work out there, especially in the book realm of things. Tell, yes. tell me a little bit about the book. So Words Are Wealth was literally written for business owners, no matter where you are in your career as an entrepreneur, um, to help you learn how to write profitable copy. I mean, the thing is, you know, people assume that uh, words are just, you just throw them up and it just happens to work. But there actually is a science and an art to copywriting. It's not just simply writing words just for the sake of writing words. We're very strategic in the way that we put words together. And as you mentioned, word wizard, you know, I get that all the time. There is a strategy to it. And so with this book, I literally outlined my entire strategy that I have been using since literally almost 20. I've been in the industry as a copywriter now for almost 20 years. I started really? in college in 2004. Yes. So this is something I've been using literally for almost 20 years and it works. It just simply works. Wow. So that's what Words Are Wealth is about. It literally just teaches you how to leverage words to create wealth for your business. You know, I had one of our mutual friends, Donnie Bryant, on here. Oh, and, yeah. Oh, my gosh. He's and, like, you know, it was interesting because I never knew so many people didn't, didn't know what sales copy was. Yeah. Can you explain a little bit? Because I try to do justice and tell people what sales, but it's hard. It's, it for is. me, it's a hard thing to, like really put into one sentence this is what yeah. sales copy does so you know it's interesting tiger people usually approach me and they will say oh you're a copywriter so you can copyright my book and i'm like no that's mm -hmm. the other copyright so a uh, copyright spelled with an r so c-o-p-y-r-i-g-h-t that is the legal claiming of a body of work right so mm -hmm. my book is you know copywritten by the united states office of copyright or whatever now, copyright or copywriting spelled with a W, C O P Y W R I T I N G, is literally the act of writing words to sell something. The intent is always to sell. So sometimes people think, oh, well, you know, literally like a transaction, right? But when someone writes a speech for a politician, that in fact is copywriting mm. because that politician is selling the audience on his or her dream and, and their platform, right? Um, even something like when you download a mobile app 
and you notice the the words on the within the app that are you know getting you to the next phase well those instructions that's a form of copywriting because the goal is to try to get you through you know from point a to z successfully so that you can use the app as intended so literally copywriting the whole intent is to sell something whether it's selling you know transactional selling a product um or whether it's inspirational i want to inspire you with these words to maybe do something the way that ida b wells i know you can probably see her picture Absolutely. behind me but i would consider her to be a copywriter because she used her essays to inspire black people to leave the south and move to the midwest so um, that's what copywriting is. I hope I did it some justice. You did. You did. Especially bringing IDB Wells in there. I love that. You know, it's, I never thought about the politician thing. Mm hmm. Could, wow. You know, so my audience, I have a, a large audience of notaries, right? And okay. they're constantly looking for different ways of marketing themselves, but they they always overlook but because i guess because copy writing is a stealth type of mm -hmm. craft right it's it's mm -hmm. like <laughs> you don't see words the same i donnie bryant started um you know kind of training me a little bit about it and i started you know handwriting mm -hmm. copy and stuff like that and it was just like i created one landing page one oh good for with you some, with some with some copy in there I used okay. to just throw words together, right? Yeah, yeah. No conversions whatsoever. Yep. Now, now that I understand copy a little bit, that same landing page will start creating money. I'm like, this is freaking amazing. Like, if notaries would know about this, this would change everything for them. Yeah. So, like, for, for websites, they would find copy there, correct? Absolutely, yes. What, yes. what other places would they see copy? Um, let me see websites. I mean, even social media, you know, when you're very intentional about posting something with the intent of getting somebody maybe to download your lead magnet or whatever freebie you're giving away, or if you're seeking to get more, you know, clients for the notary business, I mean, that's a form of copywriting because mm -hmm. again, when you write words with the intent of selling something that's copywriting. And so for someone in this sector uh, being a notary, the biggest thing I would say is literally you have to put yourself in the shoes or in the mindset rather of your prospective customers. Mm -hmm. You know, why do people need a notary? Um, they're trying to purchase a house, right? Or they're trying to, um, I think one, one case study or something I read recently was like, somebody needed a notary because they needed like to hurry up and get a passport for their kid or something. I mean, yeah. there are all these different scenarios. And so what you want to do is put yourself in the mindset of the individual that needs your services and literally just speak to them, you know, um, especially if you have a mobile notary company, that's even better because you're literally telling them like, look, we will come to you. Like we're, this is the convenience factor that we're bringing to you. You don't have to worry about coming to us. We'll just come to you. Um, but that's the biggest thing I, I tell people all the time. A lot of folks, mistakenly assume that to be successful as a, uh, I was going to say as a notary, as a copywriter, it means that you have to know how to write grammatically correct. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Actually, the success, the success factor that comes with being a copywriter mm -hmm. is empathy. You have to empathize with people. So the, the more that you're able to hone that skill of empathy, hmm. the better you are at being able to sell people your products and services through words. So it's really empathy. Wow. Grammar is important. Don't get me wrong. It's important because you don't want to, um, you know, if you're trying to use uh, there as the possessive form and, you know, you use it as like there over there. Well, you may confuse people. I mean, so for that practical matter, yeah, grammar matters. But um, ultimately, what really shines and reigns supreme over anything else is empathy. You have to empathize with your audience and get them to understand like this is a solution to their burning problem so love it love it. now you're always working with huge companies um what 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 are you what are you working on today like these days because i know you have a conference coming up in texas if i'm yes. not mistaken yeah so um dallas texas i actually yeah. lived there for three years okay. um i have so many family and friends there uh, actually on both sides of my family, a lot of my father's side of the family recently moved there as well. But 
um, I'm having a book release party. So, ah. you know, I work so hard, Tiger, and I'm sure you can relate to this as a fellow entrepreneur, right? We work so hard that we forget to celebrate. Yeah. And so it just dawned on me with all of this traveling I've been doing lately and just all of this work I've put, I've put in getting new clients and things like that, I need to celebrate. Yes. And so fortunately I have a client that is, you know, coming in from out of the country and we were already going to meet up and handle some business in Texas. And I thought about it. I'm like, I know so many people there, it's time to party. So, um, yeah, that's coming up in less than two weeks. Now I'm really excited. I'm ready. So Miss Diddy is about to turn up. Woo! I might, I might do the little Diddy dance on him. I'm telling you, man, I, I'm ready to turn up. I'm ready. To turn up. I've been waiting over a year to dance, Tiger. I'm ready to turn up. You know, like I've been following your career for years, like years, right? And mm -hmm. I've seen the evolution of Maria Lloyd. Like, like you've just been killing, and you've been so consistent with it, right? Thank you. I I always um, mention like with entrepreneurship, like for the notaries, it's it can be. It's one thing to be a notary, but it's another thing to be a notary entrepreneur, right? Yes. What kind of advice would you say, like, what have kept you going so long and like with the tenacity and just like the hunger, like I want more and never being satisfied? What has been keeping you so steadfast on that? That's actually an excellent question. So I would have to say a tribe, find your tribe mm. because entrepreneurship can be a very lonely place let me tell you there have been many days where i've literally thought i was having a nervous breakdown right yeah. stayed up all night working on this one client project you know when it's time to launch nothing works everything yeah. is shut down servers off i mean i've had those days and it's really traumatic and catastrophic when that happens but when you have a tribe that supports you that also can empathize with what you're going through and can coach you through those tough times i mean at that point you literally become you're just so resilient there's really nothing that can touch you because the moment that you feel a sense of despair you can always just tap right into your tribe so anybody that is you know aspiring to be an entrepreneur you're already an entrepreneur i would just say find your tribe that is mm. very important because this can be a really lonely place. So just get your tribe and hold on to one another and um, you'll be fine with the would right you, people. Would you say like entering an, a, a other tribes that are already established or creating your own tribe? Like what, what would you like go to a conference and connect with people in a tribe? Like would you mean you mean like that? That's a really good question, too. So I would say it doesn't have to be either or it can be and right. So. I actually have pockets, if you will, of tribes. Um, I have friends that are literally like my best friends and they're mm -hmm. also entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So we can, you know, very seamlessly transition from talking about personal issues and then going into the business, right? Um, then I have a tribe that, you know, is strictly business for the most part. I mean, yeah, we may check in and say, hey, how are the kids? You know, how are you and all that? But for the most part, it's, pretty much going to be just strictly business. Um, I think it is totally fine to, pay to play. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is if there is someone who is very successful in your particular niche or sector and they offer some sort of coaching, I think it's totally worth the investment. In fact, even with me, I mean, yeah, I've been an entrepreneur since my business was officially formed in July of 2015. So six mm -hmm. years, right, officially as an entrepreneur. And I still, every year, I spend no less than four figures on just honing my skills. And really, that's, I need to up the ante a bit on that anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but you need to align yourself with people who are where you want to be. And one of the quickest ways to do that is to pay to play, meaning that you join their coaching groups, you join their masterminds. Yes. And that way you're getting the information from the direct source and the byproduct of doing that is you actually meet like-minded people. So once again, now you are kind of handpicking your tribe. And as you go along, you're literally just adding people to that tribe so, or sometimes subtracting, right? You got to do that sometimes right. as well. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, you can do all of the above. I don't think that either one needs to be mutually exclusive. You can pay, you can uh, go to conferences and meet people. Of course, if there's someone in the conference, 
nine times out of 10, they have the same mindset as you. So that's yeah. very helpful. Um, I mean, I say do it all, whatever makes sense, whatever works for you. I love what you said too, because you have almost like categories of people you kick it with, right? Like yes. you have your business people, then you have your, you know, pop a bottle people. And then you have like me, I have my ski mask people, you know what I mean? We go. <laughs> Well, look, we ain't gonna talk about them, Tiger. We ain't gonna talk about that. We got, we might have some feds. We got notaries that are notarized know, right? my ass right into the prison and shit. No, <laughs> nah, y'all ain't getting that assignment. Thank you. Right. But um, if you guys are now tuning in, we have the illustrious Maria Lloyd, ladies and gentlemen. This is the War Room Live. This is the Queen Edition. She is setting it off, headlining the joint. I am so excited to have her because I've been watching her career for a very long time. She just released a super, super hot book, uh, Words Are Wealth. I mean, this is the type of information that you guys need to understand to really grow your business. It, I can only talk about power of attorney so much. I have to bring experts into this game for you guys to really learn this stuff, man. This is valuable, valuable stuff. Correct me if I'm wrong. You recently got married too. No. 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 Mm -mm. Okay, I thought that's what was like some wedding kind of picture or something like that. You may have, but um, nope. <laughs> Rewind. We're, we're gonna throw that to the side for a second. Don't worry about that. Scratch that off, Your Honor. Um, <laughs> that was just a little technical glitch, everybody. Technical glitch. Yeah, technical glitch. It happens. So what is in store for Maria Lloyd in the next three years? What can we expect to see from you in the next three years? Well, um, for starters, I am very big on autonomy. I really, What's I feel that? that human being, so it's just being able to do things without being regulated. Mm. Um, so okay. Globalization for me is like a form of autonomy. So having multiple passports, having homes that are outside of, you know, America, things okay. like that. That's what I'm really focusing on right now. And, you know, my pathway to um, uh, paying for that, for lack of better words, I don't know why I can't think of the word I wanted to say, um, is to really branch out with, with regard to business. So one thing I've been doing recently is studying um, this concept of turning machines into employees. And what I mean by that hmm. is vending, vending business. So I wanna give a shout out to my clients, Vending University, because they have this amazing uh, Vending University closed group and I joined it. And it, that's another benefit of being a copywriter. I work with these exceptional entrepreneurs. And of course, again, I have to you know, be empathetic, right? So right. I'm tapping into their mindset. I'm tapping into the mindset of their pr prospective clients or customers. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is something I want to learn. Like I want to join the class. So it's really cool because I actually oftentimes become a customer of my clients. So mm. it's just really interesting. But uh, vending, I, I'm really intrigued by that. And it's a, it's a space that I would like to tap into just to diversify, excuse me, my income stream. So in the next, you know, three years, I think people will probably hear me sparingly talking about, you know, my vending machines and things like that. Cause I'm really fascinated with this concept of turning machines into employees. Like that really just, it excites me and I'm looking forward to getting into it. You, you were the first, one of the first people to put me on to bots before they started using yeah. bots for Forex and all that, like they, they, but mm -hmm. you were the first one that I've ever heard talk about Facebook, um, auto messaging bots and then how mm -hmm. you were programming them to like almost it, it had like a real person response to it like you really thought you was talking to somebody but you know it was so you're, was you're like so ahead of the curve with all of this stuff too man um okay I so my technology. favorite my favorite what the heck is domain name flipping okay so you know we think about real estate right um, real estate is a hot topic right now. Go get you a multifamily, you know, building, uh, get, you know, flip houses, sell them wholesale, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. So domain flipping is literally digital real estate. That's exactly what it is. My um, favorite. It's you taking a piece of 
internet and owning some of that. And what I mean by taking a piece of the internet, meaning, you know, getting a domain name. So a domain name is like the address that you type into your browser, right? So www.amazon.com, www.wordsarewealth.com, whatever. That is your domain name. Mm-hmm. So what you can do is actually purchase that domain name and then resell it to someone else. Um, and it, the value is contingent upon like, uh, in this case, value is truly in the you know hands of the beholder, so to speak, because, or in the eyes rather of the beholder, because maybe to the average Joe or Jane, um, www.xyz.com doesn't make a lot of sense. But if your company has uses that acronym, right? Or it's, you know, named something with X, Y, and a Z. Well, I mean, that's, I mean, that's extremely valuable um, for your company. And so with my strategy, as it relates to domain flipping, I try to focus on specific niches. So like right now I'm sitting on a lot of like Africa themed, um, more specifically Ghanaian themed Mm -hmm. URLs. So mm-hmm. like real estate in Ghana. Now I don't own that one. I, in fact, I own like almost a hundred domains. So I don't really remember them really? verbatim, but I know I have one for dating in Ghana. Yes, yeah. I have one for dating in Ghana. I have one for real estate in Ghana. I have something for Rwanda. I mean, I have just several um, Africa themed um, domain names that I'm just holding on to right now as I'm watching you know, Africa just as a collective continent, just yes. blossom and bloom, right? So um, that's essentially what domain flipping is. It's literally purchasing a URL and then reselling it in the market um, at a, you know, obviously at a um, profit. Now, I think I saw it was an interview that you did on Black Wealth Renaissance. Shout out to Jalen and, and uh, the rest of the Black Wealth Renaissance. Yeah, shout out David to Jalen, David, Jared, Kelly. Yeah. Yes, shout I love out. them. And you were talking about yes. like you had the just bought too. a I domain or something and then you like flipped it like 24 hours later or something. It's like that quick. Like you didn't have to build a website or anything for this. It was just you just grabbed the name. Yeah, it was, um, this was, and you know, don't get me wrong. This is definitely not this like standard route. So I would definitely consider mm-hmm. this to be like a one-off thing, but mm-hmm. I purchased a domain name in February and the domain name was like centered around mortuaries and marketing and things like that. Cause you remember, I always try to find like a theme to invest in, like a, like a theme with my domain name. So I actually bought something dealing with the mortuary space. And so uh, this was in February of last year, actually. Wow, it's crazy. So in February of last year, well, in March, I get a query um, where basically what I had going on was I took the domain and I had it forwarded over to my business's website, my business's uh, Management 24. So if you came to Management 24, my Facebook Messenger bot would greet you and you can chat right into the bot. And that's exactly what the buyer did. So he chatted into the bot and he was like, hey, you know, I want to purchase this domain name. And so I was like, you know, well, actually, I'm sorry. He asked me if I if I was selling it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I wasn't. But, you know, (laughs) what's up, right? Um, Because, you know, everybody has a price. I believe that everybody has. We all have a price. So I'm like, what's up? And so at first he was, you know, we did the little cat and my mouse chase. Oh, how much are you willing to sell it for? Oh, what do you, you know, so we did that whole thing for a while. And so um, finally he offered me, I think his initial offer was a thousand dollars. And, you know, this was my first uh, rodeo. Okay. So I was trying to play tough and I'm like, and mind you, I forgot to mention this. I had only paid $22 for the domain. So when I bought it in February, I paid $22. And the only reason why it was that expensive is because I paid for privacy protection. So usually, I mean, I don't, it's a domain name will cost you, you know, 99 cents, $12, mm-hmm. just depends on the sales. But usually you're looking at about $12 for a domain name. So anyway, um, he offered me, a, you know, a thousand dollars. And so I was like, well, I don't think that's enough. Um, you know, I would, I would be willing to sell it to you for 5,000. And wow. the, the way that I justified that, cause I know somebody listening may say, okay, now she was reaching. <laughs> yeah. And I, I justified that 
price by saying that using this domain name, you can acquire clients in that in that sector, right? In the mortuary sector. And I know I've worked with mortuary clients. Mm -hmm. They make 10 plus thousand dollars per funeral. So, I mean, you know, it's nothing for them to pay five thousand dollars for a service. That, Ooh, that's your positioning for them. sick. So that's how I justified it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. But look, it didn't work. Okay. <laughs> it didn't work. Um, he wasn't going. He was not going yeah. because, like I said, his father owned a mortuary and all that good stuff. So um, he disappeared after I, you know, brought up the whole like, oh, I want to sell it to you for five thousand. And he was like, nope, not doing it. And so then he disappeared. And I was pretty upset with myself because I'm like, OK, I could have literally gotten a bag like I paid twenty two dollars and I declined a thousand. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So I followed up with him and I'm like, hey, you know, I'm interested in moving forward if you are, um, but could we come up on that price just a bit more? I can't do a thousand. Mm -hmm. And so he said 1100. And at this point, since I had waited a couple of weeks and I was a little nervous and thought he was going to pull it out, I was like, yeah, let's do 1100. And so that was it. It was very seamless. And so again, I just want to be clear. That is a kind of like one off situation. But um my whole point in saying that is going back to me saying that the value is in the eye of the beholder right because for him that domain was worth four figures right. i bought it at 22 bucks but for him it was worth four figures because he wanted to you know have it latched on to his father's business so i mean it's just a very it's the wild wild west um domain flipping has been around for a while now at least since the late 90s but it's it's the wild wild west and now you have crypto domains which i think we would need a whole nother show to talk about that but i've wow. invested in a, a, quite a number of crypto domains as well so right so thank you uh brie she's putting in all the links uh how you can get hold of maria lloyd she has her ig her facebook and then uh the words are you guys click that link get that book i mean like i'm i'm still waiting on mine so I know there's going to be some book sales off of that because you he's like Maria is a beast. Oh, we got Donnie Bryan in the house. Is that you, Donnie? Donnie? Is that Donnie? What's up? <laughs> Look, if you guys get words on well, make sure you turn to 14 and see what Donnie had to say. I quoted Donnie in the book because he's I mean, come on. He's a he's a freaking living legend. Why not? You got Absolutely. To. Any final words, my dear? Because this is your celebration. You just want to celebrate oh, you gosh. and thank you for all of the work. You've helped so many businesses out here. You've helped me. It, it, like just me sitting on the sidelines, you've helped me on, on a lot of things. So we just wanted to celebrate you. We want to say thank you for all the hard work. Black women are leading the pack with entrepreneurship in all categories. I love it. That's why I had to create this and bring you on here to lead it. Leave us with some final words, my queen. Oh, man. Well, first of all, thank you so much for this opportunity. And I'm just so happy that you and I had an opportunity to connect because we haven't really connected in almost, I don't know, six years or so. Yeah. So I'm really, you know, happy just to see you. Right. Um, final words. Wow. I would just say that and I, I mentioned this recently um, in a conversation with Black Wealth Renaissance, but, you know, wealth starts here. It starts with your mindset. Um, so just make sure that you're very aware of what you're putting into your mind. Um, your brain is a muscle, so it stores things. So just be very intentional about what you're putting into your mind because it is storing that stuff and it comes out in different ways. And so you just want to make sure that for the most part, you're inputting data that will push you along whatever path uh, you you want to be on. So that's those are the final words I would like to leave with everybody. And again, thank you so much for this. And you guys heard it from the best, man. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you guys got tremendous value from this. She is a she is a legend in her own right. She is a beautiful black queen. Let's give her praise. Let's put your hands together for this and then I, I wish you guys the very best. Peace, love, and cash flow. We will see you on the other side. You heard?